What is going on guys? Today we're going to review Demon Sword for the NES. Demon Sword is an action side-scroller that was developed by Toast and published by Taito. Demon Sword follows a warrior named Victar who must stop the Dark Fiend and his Demon Horde. Now first let's take a look at the graphics. The levels look quite nice and the sprites do as well. The character animation isn't bad but I have seen better. The way Victor swings his sword is very smooth and looks great. Also, you may notice that the game goes for a more mature look, something that's a little different than, say, Mario. So if you don't like cartoony, you might like this game, at least for the visual effects. The music of Demon Sword is also well done, although it is lacking in variety. For example, there are only two level themes, a boss theme, a mini boss theme, and a theme for the shrine, and there are a few other tunes thrown in there as well. So there isn't much variety, but at least the few tracks that we get are good. Sometimes this game's music even gets stuck in my head. The sound effects are also well done. The slash of the sword sounds great, and all the other nuances are perfectly acceptable. The game's controls are good, but not amazing. A is for the sword. B is for the projectile. Select is to use any spell that you have equipped. Start is pause. Down is to duck. Left and right obviously move you in that direction. And lastly, up is to jump. Now, I know what you're thinking. I hate pressing up to jump, and you know, usually I would agree with you, but in the case of Demon Sword, it really does work. You see, in Demon Sword, you're not required to do precise precision platforming, so to speak, and it is not that type of game, so pressing up to jump doesn't hinder the experience. It feels fine. That brings me to the gameplay. Demon Sword has seven stages, and they aren't too long, so if you're good at Demon Sword, you can probably crush this game within a half an hour. Each stage of Demon Sword has its own identity, and that the stages all look unique, though the goal is always the same. To get to the end of the stage and kill the boss. Not all levels scroll horizontally either. Some of the levels scroll vertically, and even some do both. So that's kind of a neat touch. I will admit, though, that the level design is kind of lacking. All the levels look different, but there isn't really anything interesting to find in them. Also, the stages even seem to repeat sections. Like, take a look at this. Wait, didn't I already see this already? And this happens in more than one stage. So the levels look nice, but they otherwise are not very interesting. Every two stages, your sword grows, which extends the range of attack and raises the damage output. Also, in every stage there are multiple doors called Mystic Gates, which lead you to one of two places. A mini-boss or the Power Shrine. In the Power Shrine, you're able to get a Power Dart that permanently raises your attack damage for the projectile, not the sword and there is only one power dart per stage, excluding the first stage, which there is no upgrade. You also might get a spell in the power shrine. In the mini-boss room, you of course fight the mini-boss. If you kill him, he'll likely drop a consumable spell. These spells are useful, though I usually don't bother with them. Sometimes the mini-boss will also drop the power dart. Once I get the power dart, I generally don't go in any more mystic gates until the following level. I say this because you can continue to enter mystic gates as long as you have keys though all you'll get are consumable spells. Let's take a look at the heads-up display. That's your life meter. That's your power meter, which actually represents the strength of your projectile. That's your score, your lives, and the strength of your sword. As your sword grows, so does that meter. It's actually pretty simple. Now let's take a look at the items. Enemies will drop them randomly. These are keys. They seem to be the most common drop in the game and allow you to enter mystic gates. These are red spheres, for each red sphere will replenish one square of health upon death. These are black spheres, they raise maximum health by one square upon death. Those are the most important items in the game, so always look out for the red and black spheres. This here is the phoenix, and he will pull you out of a bottomless pit and allow you to fly for a short time. This is a great item, although its usefulness extends to only the first level as all other levels don't have bottomless pits. And like I said earlier, you don't have to worry about that precise platforming. So those are the items that you can stockpile. What about other items? Well, let's take a look. The other items only last for a limited amount of time upon collecting them. This is the wheel dart. It allows you to throw a projectile in four directions simultaneously. This is called an arrow. It increases the speed of your projectile. This here is invincibility and makes two copies of you, so three of you in total. So those are your items. 
When playing this game, I would recommend taking time in every level to farm for items. The keys and spheres are very important, so if you rush through a level, which you can absolutely do, you'll miss collecting these, and the game does get pretty tough, so you'll want all the help that you can get. Also, about farming. If you farm too long, you'll get attacked by the undead skeleton dogs. These guys do crazy damage, and it's best to start moving if you see these guys. I'm pretty sure they're a sort of time limit to the stage, as there is no traditional timer. It is possible to kill the demon dogs and collect items, but I find that they're usually not worth it. Although if you have invincibility, yeah, why not? Now let's take a look at the spells. You acquire spells from Mystic Gates, either by killing the mini-boss or from the shrine. There are three spells. There's Lightning, which kills all enemies on screen, the Power Beam, which shoots a beam straight ahead, and a Fire Sphere, which provides a protective barrier around Victor. As I said before, I tend to not use them as I find them arbitrary. I just stick with the Sword and Shuriken. So that's Demon Sword. The graphics are good and has a mature look to it. There are plenty of items to collect and killing things is fun. The controls might not be for everybody and the level design might bore you, but at least this game doesn't drag on. There is a password system in case you do feel like it is dragging. If you get a game over, press and hold down, and then press B-A-B-A, -B -A, and you'll get a password. To enter the password, on the startup screen, press and hold up, and press A-B-A-B. -B. It is absolutely not intuitive, but it is there. Luckily, the cartridge doesn't cost very much if you are interested in playing Demon Sword. Overall, I give Demon Sword a 7 out of 10. Thanks for watching.